ちは。今日はお元気ですか。To my hey, what's going on, guys? Today I wanted to show you how to build your own Google Translator program. Today we will be using an API from Rapid API. If you haven't seen that video of how to use Rapid API, go ahead and check out this video up above, and I will show you exactly how to use that website. After we get the API, I will show you how to get the user's input, and not only will the program produce some output, but I'm going to show you how to have it talk to you. Once we get the program to talk to us, we are also going to alter it so that it speaks the translation back in its own pronunciation with all the different accents and everything, so you know exactly how to say it back. First thing that we're going to do is install a few dependencies so that we can make sure that our program can do the things we want it to. And so I'm going to pip install some of these things. I'm going to open up my terminal down here. And now that I have that open, I'm going to say pip install requests. And you can actually put some of these in at the same time. So I'm going to say space play sound space gtts hit enter and i already have that installed so it's not going to say complete or anything but if you don't get any errors then you should be good to go and i do need to install one more pip install dash capital u and it's pi object c and i need that to make sure that the sound is going to work because i want my program to not only translate the text but i want it to speak it to me with those things installed, we can go ahead and close that. And let's import those libraries. I'm going to import requests so that we can call our API. Then we are going to import AST. Importing AST will allow us to take the string that the API will give us, and we're going to convert that into an actual dictionary. And then we're going to say from play sound, import play sound, and play sound will allow us to uh, play back a audio file, an mp3 file, so that we can hear what the translation sounds like. Then finally, we're going to say from GTTS import lowercase g capital TTS. So make sure your capitalization is just like that. And we will get to all those later. But the next thing that we're going to do is hop on over to our API to make sure that we are grabbing that data to help us translate whatever the user wants. So if I head on over to my API, I'm using specifically NLP translation. It has really great rating, so I thought I'd give it a try. And I'm just going to use this get request and I'm going to select Python requests. And that should give me the starter code for this API. So I'm going to copy this. I'm not going to copy all of it because it has import requests. I already have that in my code. So I'm going to copy the rest of this. If you've never seen Rapid API before and you don't know how to use it or how to subscribe to an API, it's free. I can show you how to do that in this video just above. Go ahead and click that if you want to check that out. But go ahead and copy that once you are subscribed to this. And I'm just simply going to paste it into my code. And let's just run it and see what happens. So right here it says it has some text, hello world, and it's translating it looks like to Spanish. Over here it gives us this dictionary and it says hello world and here is the translated version of it. Hola mundo. So that is working just fine. Let's take a look at this next part. So this response.txt, I want to be able to query this dictionary, but there's a problem with this response.txt. If I print the type of response dot text and hit run, it's going to show you that it's actually a string. I can't query this the way I want to when it's a string. That's where our AST comes in. So let's use the AST library to convert this into an actual dictionary. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a new variable and we're going to call it dict response, like dictionary response. And I'm going to use that AST library by saying AST dot and inside of there, there's a, a function called called literal eval and it's just going to take that response 
dot text that we had before and it's going to convert it into a dictionary so hopefully that works let's test it now i'm going to print the type of dict response and hopefully instead of string it will say dictionary so let's hit run and it does it is now a dictionary so i'm going to get rid of this and then rid of this text. And if I just print the dict response instead, it will give me what looks the same, but it's actually a dictionary instead of just a string. Now that I have that, I'm going to create my own dictionary and I'm going to organize this data however I want. So I'm just gonna call this translate equals a dictionary. And I'm just gonna say a key of translated colon. And then I'm gonna give it a value, which is my dict response response and let's look at we want translate and we want translated text so let's query translated text translated text and let's print the translate with the key of translated and if i run this this it uh, gets me a little bit closer, okay, which is awesome. So I don't want just that, but I want specifically the ES, it says. So I'm going to say ES, and now it's just going to give me just the translated text. So that's working really well. I could even change this up here to say just hi, hit run, and now it says Hola. Now that I have that working, I'm going to go towards the top over here. You can see that it has uh, a dictionary that was given to me. Let me just kind of organize this a little bit more to be more legible. And instead of these fixed values of the text, what language to translate to, and what language to translate from, I'm going to get the user's input so that they get to decide. So I'm going to make three variables. The first one's going to be translate from, and that's going to be an input function. I'm just going to say translate from, and then I'm going to do the same thing, only it's going to be translate to, and then I'm going to call this text, enter your phrase. So if I hit run, it's going to say translate from, I'll say English to Spanish, and then whatever I want. And that's what it's going to look like. Okay. So right now it's actually not going to work, of course, because we need to change uh, these values in here. So now that we have the user's input, let's go ahead and input their whatever they said. So in their text, I'm just going to say text. So whatever they said in the text to will be translate to and from is going to be changed to translate from. Let's test this. So it says trans translate from en for English to es for Spanish. Hi, how are you? And now it says hola, como estas? So that's working really nicely. Now, what if I tried to do a different language? So let's do English to French, which is fr. Enter your phrase. Hi, how are you? Oh well, look, it's still going to give me, it's trying to do Spanish because I hard coded es. So instead of this es, I'm going to say translate to. So whatever I say, it's going to change it here. So let's try that now. Translate from English to French. Hi, how are you? Now when I hit enter, now it's saying salud, como se, como se va? Okay. And so that is working very nicely now. So all we did was change this fixed code from ES to translate to, and that's working fine. But of course, we can't expect our users to know how to type in English. It's just EN. If I just type in English like this, English to, let's say, Spanish, hi, it's just going to run an error because it doesn't take English, Spanish fully written out. It just takes EN or ES for Spanish. Let's make that a lot easier for the user so that they can say whatever they want. Up here, I'm going to say if, if the user's translate to is double equals to English, then I want to set translate to to EN. So the user, this allows the user to type out English and they'll be able to uh, just convert it to EN for them. Okay. And I also need to do this to translate from. So I'm literally just going to copy this, go a few lines down and do change to from to to from. And let's test that, make sure that it works. So translate from English. And I didn't say Spanish yet, so I still need to say ES. Hi, 
now it says hola so that works so let's just copy this and let's do the same thing for another language let's do spanish if they say spanish it will be es and let's do that same thing for this down here for translated or translate from so spanish translate from translate from and let's test that so from spanish to english and let's do hola now it says hello so you can see that is working just fine and i'm just going to do one more language i'm going to or let's do two more languages and i'm just going to speed up the video so i can get this going if you want to follow the same practice you can i'm going to do the same thing for french as well as japanese Okay, welcome back. I just filled that out with Japanese and French, so now I have four languages. If you ever want to look at more languages, you can just research the documentation for this API, and it will show you some of those things. But I'm just gonna stick with these four languages. You get the gist of it after just a couple of those, so I'm not too worried about that. But now that we have that, I am now going to store whatever they said instead of printing the translated right here, I'm going to actually store this and I'm gonna call this text. And I'm going to now not just allow the computer to tell you what the response is, but I want it to say it out loud. So we're going to create our speech function. This is gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna create my function call right here. So speech is what I'm gonna call this. And I'm gonna send it my text. But also I'm going to uh, send my translate to. The reason is, is because if the user is trying to say translate to Spanish, I want the computer to talk to them in a Spanish accent. And I'm gonna show you just how to do that. But we do need to send it the language. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top and I'm going to define my function. So def speech it's receiving text and also the translate to but i'm just going to call this language i'm going to rename it to language and now we can use this gtts which is going to allow our computer to actually talk to us and everything so that's going to be really cool so i'm just going to print my text up here so that our computer is still printing it but i want it to create this output and inside of this output is going to access that G capital TTS like that. And inside of here is going to take three props. The first one is text and we're just going to give it our text comma. Now it's asking for what language this is actually looking for the accent. So the accent I want it to give us is whatever language the user gave us, comma. And then the last one is going to give us the pace of which it should give us. So I'm going to set uh, slow to false. Uh, I've tested this a couple of times, and if I do slow is true, then it's going to be too slow, I feel like. So you can change that if you want. Now that I have that output, we are going to have this output be saved into a file that we're gonna call sounds. So let's come over here, right click on your project, new and directory. And I'm gonna call this sounds. So you should have this directory called sounds and I'm just gonna leave it empty for now. And what we're gonna do, we're going to actually have our program write a file for us. I'm gonna say output dot save and now give it the path to wherever your sounds is in my case it's dot slash sounds slash now the name of the file i want it to be called i'll just call this output dot mp3 make sure it's an mp3 and i'm just going to duplicate that line and i'm just going to change this to play sound so now it's using my play sound library function and i want it to play that same file that it saved so let's test this and see if what happens so translate from english english if i can spell it right to let's do spanish hi how are you today Hola, ¿cómo estás hoy? perfect if you heard that hopefully you did you can see it even had the accent and it's because of this right here if i gave this language right here a string of en and then I did that same exact thing. So from English, 
to Spanish. Hi, how are you today? Hola, como estas hoy? So it tried to say it, so it said it, but it did it in an English accent, which I don't want. So that's why I changed this to whatever the language the user chose, and it's going to translate. So let's try one more. Let's say from English to, let's try Japanese. Japanese. Hi. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, sir. You saw that it not only typed it out, but it said it in a very strong Japanese accent, which is awesome. I'm gonna copy that Japanese text and I'm just gonna do it in reverse. I translate from Japanese, just to make sure that this works, uh, to English. Now I'm gonna paste that in. Hello, how are you today? And that worked perfectly. So if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for my next tutorial, please let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in and happy coding.